Hello and welcome to the next video of my Worlds 2022 preview series where I cover all 24 teams as well as give you some videos in addition to that as it pertains to Worlds. Eventually I will have a Worlds 22 playlist if I do not have one already and at the end of the video you can click on it or you can look at my channel and um, go through the videos. This is the third video in the series. Um, I'm not doing it like I did MSI which was from worst to first. Um, this is just a matter of trying to get videos out for teams that are already locked in and we know what seed they are. So T1 we know are the second seed in the LCK, so we're doing the video on them. Yesterday we did Gen G, the day before we did Isaris from Latin America, so that's where we are. In the comments, you will see a link to the Discord if you'd like to join us. We talk about the games as they go on, we BS about League and things like that, so if you want to join, join us. Uh, it's free. Um, in the description you also see a link to my memberships um, if you click the join member or whatever button down below um, there are two tiers one for ten dollars which includes all of my extra content which will be NFL American football related where I predict the games and winners um, fantasy football rankings weekly um, as well as because you're watching League of Legends um, league predictions throughout worlds for winners, losers, if you are into esports, betting, gambling, things like that. There is also a $3 tier if you just want the badges to support me and um, be noticed in the comments more. Um, trying to, you know, make this sustainable. And the only way that it will become sustainable is if there is some income. So um, if you want this to continue, that is the, I guess that is the price. Um, so now on to the preview. T1. Second place finishers at MSI, obviously a very, very, very good team. The New York Yankees of League of Legends, right? Uh, most storied franchise, um, has the best player ever in Faker in mid lane. It is just, you know, the case of this team is elite, right? Um, ended up losing to Gen G in a very, very terrible stomp uh, 3-0. Polt is 18 and 6 as a coach at international events he only played only did msi so uh they finished second when 18 and 6 losing to rng in five games in the finals um so that's that um lck second seeds have finished between fifth and eighth every well actually no that's not the case in 2019 fifth through eighth um that was team drx uh Worlds 2020 finished fifth through eighth. I believe that was um, HLE. No, might have been Gen G. I don't, I'm not gonna. I shouldn't have even speculated. Um, I just looked at it, but that was also before I wrote all these stats down. So I had a lot more things going on in my head. Um, Worlds 2021 last year third fourth. That was Gen G. So um, LCK second seed usually gets out of groups and um, competes in uh, the quarters at minimum. In top lane, you have Zayas. Zayas in the um, LCK playoffs struggled. 1.9 KDA, 7.5 CS per minute. That is not good. 7.5 is definitely below where you want to be. Of course, in the LCK playoffs, you are in the second strongest region in the world. That has to be kept in mind. They only played two series against DK and... Um, Gen G, so you have to also take that into account, right? Um, 1.9, like I said, 1.9, 7.5, 66 KP, so a high KP, 24 7 damage share, which is very high. T1 did struggle, though. That's the thing. Like, they they got crushed in the second series, so a lot of these stats look pretty weak because 24 7 is strong for damage share, but 427 damage per minute is not that much. He was behind significantly in lane at 15 minutes, usually like 600, 650 gold behind. Um, had no solo kills in eight games, played five champions in that span. The only international experience Zayas has is at MSI um, in spring, finishing second, like I said, going 18 and 6. 242 KDA, which is okay for an international event. I thought Zayas was um, the second best top laner at the tournament behind Ben who overtook him in the finals 866 CS per minute is very high um, very different than the 7.5 he put up in the LCK playoffs 866 is very good um, honestly 8 is what I shoot for for a top laner 
um, and 866 definitely clears that by quite a bit. 54.7 KP is also more than um, acceptable. Very different meta though now than it was before. Before it was very split push oriented and now it is more um, team fight oriented. In the jungle we have Owner, another very young player on this team in the um, jungle role. 2.8 KDA which is good. Um, not great at the LCK level but good. 5.2 CS per minute is much lower than you want it to be, 75.1 KP. He was definitely gapped in the jungle, but tried to facilitate and make things happen. 13.7 damage share is kind of, you know, it's a facilitator role now. So the jungle role, like 15 damage per damage percentage is like good because it's just like doesn't happen very often where the jungler is going to lead his team in damage. 243 damage per minute is very low. Uh, mixed results on uh, at 15 minutes. I believe like ahead in gold and behind in XP or vice versa. One solo kill in eight games. Played four champions in eight games. I believe half of those games were on a Wukong. So four games in that case. Um, he's been on the team a little longer than Zayas. Last year he went to Worlds finishing um, third, fourth. So actually Gen G was 2020. Um, 2021 was T1, third, fourth, um, which is funny that I'm talking about T1 and I, I mixed that up, right? And I'm sure people are already like, you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, yeah, well, I don't edit this crap out, so this is what it is. MSI 2022 second. Uh, internationally, between the two events, he went 28 and 10, 339 KDA, which is more than solid. Um, that's very respectable. 595 CS per minute is also very good. We're in near six. That's elite CS per minute. 66.2 KP is slightly lower, but at six CS per minute, it makes sense. He's farming instead of facilitating. Um, given the meta last year and in spring, it's not a surprise. Excuse me, very different meta now though. And I think owner is struggling a bit in it. So I have to take that into account. Uh, T1 are just struggling in general. In mid lane, we have Faker, the GOAT. Um, you see a lot of black written here. That's because he's been to a lot of international events, right? He is the most storied and acclaimed player. Has the um, most trophies in his trophy case. 2-2 two, two KDA in playoffs. 8-2 CS per minute. Definitely lower than where you want it to be. He's more of a facilitator now at this point in his career, though. 65-3 KP. You know, that's okay for a mid laner. Um, pretty average, 22-1 damage share, 386 damage per minute. That is much lower than where you want it to be. Uh, mixed results, you know, just like I said with owner, um, you know, at 15 minutes, he's kind of like, eh, whatever, in the middle. He's not behind, he's not ahead. No solo kills, played six champions in eight games, uh, including Renekton in mid. I never want to see that again out of Faker. So, um, international success, right? Worlds 2013, he won. 2015, MSI second. Um, Worlds 2015 first, MSI 22nd, 2016 first. Worlds 2016 first, MSI 2017 first. Worlds 2017 second, MSI 2019 third, fourth. Worlds 2019 third, fourth. Worlds 2021 third, fourth. MSI 2022 second. So um, he was on the best team ever. You know, that T1 run where they went and won first place at Worlds in 2015 and then won MSI, then won Worlds again, then won MSI. Like, that is never going to happen again. Um, watch, someone's going to say, well, it has. Uh, and I, it's never going to happen again. Um, that was just utter domination, right? An utter dominating dynasty, dynasty, right? Uh, 130 and 50 at international events. It's a 72% win rate. 3-2-2 KDA across all those games. 8-8-2 CS per minute. 61-7 KP. He has played through it all. Um, Faker is the greatest of all time. Is he at his peak anymore? Absolutely not. Um, but you have to respect the fact that he is the best to ever play the game. Um, that is that is without a doubt. Um you know, a lot of people might crap on him, but that trophy case says says different, right? Um, and, you know, I have said before, you know, because we sometimes talk in the Discord about the best teams ever, and it's like, well, this team did good, and this team did good, and it's like, 
you know, some teams might be the best team ever, but when, I mean, on paper, but when it came to Worlds, the meta didn't fit them, right? And some teams will go on a run, Sooning in 2020, for example, because the meta, or 2019, I, I forget which, um, would, you know, the meta fits them, they go on a run, which was improbable, right? And can you say that team was, like, really good at the time? Yes, but overall, in the grand scheme of things, they were very meta-dependent. And that T1 run between 2015 and 2017 is an indicator that that team and the base of that team was not meta dependent. It played well regardless of what was meta. And um, that is the indicator of what is great, right? What is greatness? Bot lane, Gumiyushi, 3-2 KDA, 10 6 CS per minute. I'm actually surprised how well these numbers look from um, the playoffs because they struggled. T1 really struggled, but 10 6 CS per minute, like he picked it up under the radar, you know, like I feel like Guma has not been the same player since MSI ever since. I always say it, Shogun and Taki punched him in the mouth at level two and he has not been the same ever since. But maybe the performance in the LCK playoffs will give him a little bit of a spark. Um, 68.7 KP, 30 damage share, 516 damage per minute, very low. That's like 200 to 300, possibly even 400 less than where you are going to want him to be if you want to succeed at the highest level at this event. Mixed results. Um, I believe he was behind in golden XP, but ahead in CS at 15 minutes, which makes sense. 10.6 CS per minute. Um, no solo kills. Four champions in eight games. Guma, just like owner, has played the last two years with the club. Very young player, 28 and 10. 361 KDA, 968 CS per minute, 59.9 KP. Um, more of a farmer than a participator, but very good player nonetheless we'll see if he can turn it around coming off of this lck performance for t1 sake um, because they definitely have fallen off recently support carrier i believe carrier is the best support in the world um right now is he playing like it absolutely not this meta is not really his um but i do think that if he could stop inting and picking sejuani and crap like that he'd be better off 26 kda 58 2 kp on average would clear one ward every five minutes and drop one ward every two minutes at the lck playoffs four champions in eight games so performed well i believe yumi was his most played um he has been to worlds uh multiple times he was on the drx team in 2020 that went uh fifth eighth then he joined t1 last year finishing third fourth with the rest of this team and um msi obviously is with the team finishing second so he is 32 and 15 at international events. 250 KDA 693 KP. Um, so what do I think about this? Well, that KP from the LCK playoffs is extremely low, 58.2. That is very low. He was dying before fight started. He was not in good position. Um, he needs to pick that up. Um, really, really does. He has to facilitate. He is best on engaged champions. And I would argue you go against the meta. If they can... They are better off probably going against the meta. Pick Carrion Nautilus. Pick him things that um, can engage and make things happen. And this team is, is, is in a position to succeed. He can draw bands out for those champions. And now all of a sudden T1 have a totally different look. And honestly, I think that that is what is best for them. Because right now this meta does not fit them one bit. They are on Struggle Street. Gen G, what they did to them was absolute destruction. And something has to change if they want to um, have any shot in hell. Um, I do believe that semis are definitely a possibility with this team. I do still consider them on the borderline first to second tier. Um, probably alongside EDG. But, um, well, yeah. ED, they're alongside EDG on the second tier. As of right now, I mean, EDG have more games to play, right? We have... Um, regional qualifiers, but that's where I have T1. Um, little spoiler for later on in a few hours, my power rankings are going to come out. Just waiting on the VCS, Saigon, Buffalo, and Gam Esports to finish up, as well as um, LJL. One of those teams is going to be knocked out, and then the power rankings will come out midday. And then later on today, my roundup will come out. Um, like I said, if you have not become a member of my channel, you will not see the predictions for who wins tomorrow's games you'll see the preview like you have for the roundup and the roundup itself is not going to change 
but um, additional content will come out later today. If you want to become a member, hit the button down below and uh, you'll have access to my predictions on how I think those games are going to go tomorrow. So thank you for watching. You know, join the Discord if you want to. Support me if you want this content to continue. Um, I hope you come back for more content.